over there, um, kind of in the entryway to the guest bedroom, and Noodle is joining me. Let's see, there he is. We'll see how long he stays, but you know, he is ready to participate. And I hope you are ready to participate too, or if you tune in at a later point. Again, we are doing these kind of short morning prayers, matins, devotionals, um, as a ministry of Christ the King and as a way of staying connected to one another when we are not able to worship in person. So, let's begin with an opening prayer. O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. You are welcome to join me in singing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ, all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host, Creator, Son, and Holy Ghost. Well, Noodle just scampered off, so he clearly does not like my singing, but that's okay. You know, he's still in the area, as is Meatball. Let's pray. Out of all creation, as the tail follows the cat, may your spirit go with us this day, dynamic, playful, a part of who we are, and yet free from our own imperfect desires and demands. May you surprise us with your grace, startle us with your presence, and abide with us throughout this day and every day. Amen. We'll now read a psalm. Psalm 64. I believe, yes, um, Psalm 63, verses 1 through 8. There we go. Let's see if we can find it. O oh God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Therefore, I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. For your steadfast love is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So I will bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. My spirit is content as with the richest of foods and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches, for you have been my helper and under the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. My whole being clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. Let's take a moment to welcome our gospel. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and abounding in steadfast love. So our gospel today is a little bit more of the Gospel of John, chapter 9. We are still learning about the adventures of um, a man who Jesus cures of blindness, who we have named Harold because referring to him as the man who used to be blind is a little bit awkward. So let's read. John, chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. His neighbors, that is Harold's neighbors, and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, No, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, That's me. I am the man. Now, then when were your eyes open? They asked. He replied, The man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. Where is this man? they asked him. I don't know, he said. They brought him to the Pharisees, the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed. And now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. 
But others asked, how can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. Then they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, he is a prophet. So even in, you know, this short bit of a passage, you know, Harold has come a long way. In our last episode, Harold began as a conversation piece on the relationship between sin and suffering. You know, the disciples said, well, what did this man or what did his parents do wrong that he is blind? And Jesus said, no, it is hap this happened this way so that God's glory might be displayed in Harold. And then, as Harold repeats to those who are asking what happened, Jesus makes mud with his saliva, so you have Jesus spitting. And then he sends Harold to the pool of Siloam. Harold washes and emerges from this pool being able to see. Now, it's important for us to note that at this point in the story, Jesus is not there. Jesus is gone. Once Jesus puts mud on Harold's eyes, he sends Harold to this pool of Siloam, and Jesus does not go with him. And so we have this big chunk of the Gospel of John, John chapter 9, where Jesus is not there. Jesus has left the building. And this is the longest passage in the Gospel where Jesus is absent. I mean, he's not even absent that long when he's dead. And it's important to note that because Harold is left on his own to figure out what has happened to him, who is this Jesus. He needs to struggle to make sense of everything. So let's slow everything down a little bit. Harold tells his, you know, his friends and his neighbors and those who used to see him begging that he went and he washed in this pool of Siloam. And at the beginning of the gospel, John gives us this nice little gloss that Siloam means Apostolamenos, the sent one. And that's important because, you know, that's a Greek word and it comes from the verb apostello and it's where we get the term apostle, the term that Jesus uses for those who he sends out to proclaim the gospel. Jesus also refers to himself as the one whom God has sent. So Jesus is also apostolamenos, the sent one. And so here comes Harold, you know, he's got mud on his face, he washes in the pool of the sent one, and he emerges from that water different. Different, but not quite sure what's going on. So he is different and wet and confused. And as someone who was baptized as an infant, that would be me, that's pretty much my experience of baptism and Christianity where this big important thing happens, you know, you're marked by God, your sins are washed away, you are claimed as a beloved child, boom, you've been reborn into the family of God. And then, you know, you're wet, you're confused, you're crying because you're a baby and you spend the rest of your life trying to figure out what that all means. I mean, that's pretty much Christianity. And so Harold's story is very much our story. And once again, Harold does not have Jesus on hand to help him figure out all of what has happened. And to make matters worse, Harold is immediately confronted by all of these people who want to know what happened. He's questioned by his neighbors. He's questioned by people who used to see him begging. You know, later on, he'll be questioned by others as well. He's questioned by the Pharisees. And so when Harold shows up and his neighbors and those who used to know him are confused to see him looking around, they immediately begin to argue about Harold. So once again, Harold is being talked about and not talked to. People are saying, oh, is this the guy who used to beg? Is this the man who was blind? And some people are saying, no, just somebody who looks like him. And it's at that point that Harold interjects and actually says something. Harold says, Ego a me. I am the person you are talking about. Or very simply, that's me. Ego a me in Greek pretty much can mean here I am, that's me, I am the person you are talking about. And it is a big 
deal that the first things out of Harold's mouth is the phrase ego e me. And to understand why that's so important, we actually have to back it up a little bit to the book of Exodus. So in Exodus, you know, there's a lot that goes on. The Israelites are enslaved in Egypt. Moses frees them. There's the ten But early on in the story, you know, we're getting to know Moses who liberates them, right? And Moses encounters God in this bush that burns but is not consumed. And God says, all right, Moses, you have a job. You've got to go and free my people. And Moses says, okay, but when I go, you know, what should I who should I say that you are? What is your name? And God's response is, I am. I am that I am. I am the one who is. I am who I will be. I mean, you can have a lot of fun with the verbiage in Hebrew and what exactly is God saying. But it's where we get this divine name, the I am. And if you then kind of shift to the Septuagint, I love the Septuagint. I mean, you want to make Pastor Emily smile, talk about the Septuagint. The Septuagint is the Greek version of the Old Testament. And it is the text, you know, the scripture that is being used by the people who are telling these stories about Jesus and writing the Gospels. So, for the most part, they're not reading Hebrew, they are reading Greek. And so in Greek, when Moses asks God, okay, what is your name? God says, ego eimi, I am am. And to add to that, throughout the Gospel of John, when Jesus is talking about himself, Jesus will use this phrase a lot, ego e me, I am. And you can tell that he's not just saying, oh, that's me. You can tell that he's referencing the divine name or something else is going on, because there are times in the Gospel where he says, ego e me, I am. And the reaction is strange. So at one point, Jesus says, Ego e me, and people start picking up rocks to stone him, and they accuse him of blasphemy. So, referencing the divine name. There's another point when the temple guards come to arrest Jesus, and they say, Okay, you know, which one of you is him? And Jesus says, Ego e me, and they fall to the ground. So, yes, Ego e me can just mean, Oh, yep, that's me, but it can also mean something more. And it is very telling that the first words out of Harold's mouth after he is washed in the pool of the sent one and been changed are ego e me. You see, Harold may not yet know the full of who he has met in this Jesus, what all is going on, but even so, Jesus has left his mark on Harold, body and soul. Even imperfectly, even when he's confused and a little bit lost, Harold is already bearing Christ. He is already speaking gospel. And so do we, right? We who also, you know, at one point, you know, we're dunked in the water and are still trying to figure out what has happened to us. We do it too as Christians. We may not bear Christ perfectly. In fact, we don't. You know, nobody does. And we may not even know, always know what we're doing. We may be confused, but we bear Christ even so. That divine name is stamped on us. Yes, Noodle, I love you. You too. Well, I'm not sure if you bear the image of Christ, but you bear a very important image. You're a good cat. Sorry, he's meowing. Um, but let's especially remember that, that we bear the image of Christ as we try to navigate through these weird and confusing times that we're living in right now. As we have to decide, how do we care for others? How do we care for ourselves? When it seems like, you know, it's been an awful lot of verses and I haven't seen Jesus for a while and we can't come to church together. I mean, you know, these are the times that we live in. But the gift of these times and the gift that Harold gives to us today when he says, I am, is that Jesus has not left. All of a sudden, maybe when you're feeling most lost, maybe when you're most confused, at some point you will manage to get a word in edgewise or somebody else will, and that word will catch you off guard because it will be a word of grace, it will be a word of mercy, it will be the words, I am.
Even now, God is among us. Let's close in prayer. Almighty and nourishing God, you have brought us safely into this day as a mother cat carrying her kitten. Care for us and sustain us every second, every minute, and every hour of this day. Thoroughly cleanse us from sin and lead us moment by moment that we may serve you and one another. I lift up to you especially Al Crawford and his family. I ask that you care for him in his time of sickness and recovery, that you be with his family as they work through what may be a very, very difficult time. God, in this time when we're dealing with sickness, it's really hard to be sick and it's really hard to be the family of those who are sick. So I ask that you bind these people to one another, that you open new ways for them to stay connected and that you remind them in big ways and small that you are with them, that you are not alone, that you are. In your strong name we pray, amen. We'll close by saying the Lord's Prayer. You're welcome to join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Have a blessed day.